and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for a special stream edition today. We have the Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. This is where we take a look at all 269 cards in Throne of Eldraine and give some in-depth analysis on how each card could be used in standard um, and what kind of impact it could have on the format as well. We'll be giving a letter grade for every single card as well. Um, we have a, you, every single card will be getting an A, B, C, D, or the limited rating. Um, so A's are gonna be cards that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks or be the defining card in a popular deck. That could also be an incredibly popular sideboard card. So from last set, some examples would be like Risen Reef, Soren Imperious Bloodlord, or Vela Summer. Those would be A's. A B would be a card that will see a good amount of play in standard in a support role and also, or could also be a moderately played sideboard card. So from last set, Bs would be cards like Voracious Hydra, Scampering Scourger, or Devout Decree. A C would be a fringe standboard card uh, that's used as filler for certain decks, or maybe a playable build-around card that you build a deck around for FNM kind of thing. Or it could be a, nar a narrow but still pretty commonly used sideboard card. So some examples from last that I have are like Corpse Knight, Gargos Vicious Watcher, and Sir Eulen Drake. Those would be Cs. Uh, D would be a card that you rarely see in standard, but can be a role or can fill a role for a fringe deck or maybe a fringe sideboard card. So Ds are cards that you know you may see in standard that you get paired against every once in a while, but you won't see it very much. So like Dungeon Geist, uh, Scholar of the Ages, Thought Distortion those kind of cards. Those are going to be Ds. And then cards that really shouldn't see any standard play at all. I'm going to just give those the, an L for limited rating um, there because those are cards that are probably just in the set for limited. All right, so um, all of these ratings and that grading scale, if you're watching this on YouTube, are going to be down below in the uh, video description. Also, I'll be putting the top five cards for the color as well. So as you can see here, we're starting off with white. Also, if you're here in Twitch chat, you can also, as you can see up here at the top, you can just type exclamation point grade to see that grading skill at any time. Um, so yeah, we'll be starting with white and going through these different colors to, to talk about all 269 cards here, Throne of Eldraine. And of course, Twitch chat's here for the dis discussion as well. So let's go ahead and get this party started here with one of the better cards in white in my opinion we have acclaimed contender two and a white for a three three human knight when acclaimed contender enters the battlefield if you control another knight look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a knight an aura an equipment or a legendary artifact card from among them and put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order all right, so this is definitely a, a reason to be playing knights. There is going to be a huge knight sub-theme here in Throne of Eldraine, as you'll uh, see as we go through uh, the different cards, um, specifically looking at Mardu colors. Uh, there's a Mardu land that helps you out, and there's just a lot of really good knights. And so Acclaimed Contender here makes a lot of sense to be playing even as a four of in the knight deck uh, for your three-mana slot um, because it is a three-mana 3-3 three, three that's that's going to be a little bit better than draw a card because you get to um, you get some selection looking at those top five cards. Uh, you don't get you don't get to really get removal, um, you don't get a land, but you know you get you can get another creature, um, the aura equipment or legendary artifact that can the legendary artifact part uh, can help with uh, some other cards that we'll see like cir the circle of loyalty or ember cleave in uh, red. The one thing that I don't like here, um, oh yeah, so that's a good good, good call there, Hero. Um, yeah, you, you can hit removal with uh, Murderous Rider because Murderous Rider is a knight, so that's that's a good call there. So yeah, you can get Murderous Rider, which is which is a removal spell. Good call there, y'all. The one th one thing that I'm a little gun shy with acclaimed contender that I, I normally wouldn't be is that I think in a, a very important sideboard card for the knight for like a, a knight aggro deck that we're going to talk about later 
is going to be Hushbringer. I think that's that's an important card for the Knights to have in their sideboard with all of like the elementals that should be pretty popular and, and other decks like that. And so if the Knights, uh, if a Knight aggro deck would be playing Hushbringer in the sideboard, it does kind of uh, turn down your power of acclaimed contender there. Um, so, <laughs> but besides that, like that's, that's, you know, pretty narrow there. But besides that, you know, nothing wrong with a three mana three, three, even though there's no, keywords no evasion um nothing like that uh getting getting to draw a card and getting that selection to really look for what you want is definitely nice here um so yeah i really like acclaimed contender one of the best cards in white hey blue blue Pan panics thank you so much so as far as our rating uh, it's definitely better than a b um because I do think this will see a good amount of play, but it is kind of, you know, it is narrow though. Also, it's basically just going in the night deck. So, you know, it is just basically one deck that can go in, but I think this is kind of between like an, it's not an A though. I think it's kind of between an A minus and a B plus. And, uh, this is one, you know, with it being the very first card that I was definitely, um, kind of debating between there with that A minus B plus range. Um, so Oh, I think thanks everybody. So I think I think I'm gonna go with the let's go with the B plus. Looks like we got some some other people saying B plus as well. I like that. It's a good solid B plus. By the way, this is just an aside. I think B plus is like my favorite rating of just ratings. I don't know why. I like B pluses. It's a good rating. <laughs> anyway, thanks toasted. All right, uh, we got all that glitters. One in a white, enchantment aura, um, enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. I'm not really expecting all that glitters to see any standard play at all. I think that's just a, this is just a very obvious limited card. So we're just going to give this an L for limited and move on to our next card. Okay, okay. Hero's got a good a good uh, a good point there, that I guess if if you have like a Boggles deck uh, in standard or Bogles if you have a Bogles deck in standard, where uh, yeah I guess I guess that could be a thing um, if you have like hexproof creatures and can have enough enchantments to just uh, Voltron up one creature. So I guess that could be a thing, and then all that glitters could could be there. I'll still give it the limited rating for now, but. Um, uh, we'll go D minus. That's all right. Fine. Don't talk me into it. D minus. All right. Our kind of, yeah. Cause maybe, maybe that could be a thing. <laughs> talk me into it. Archon of absolution three and a white for an archon. It's a three, two flyer protection from white. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Um, I guess an Archon is just like a a flying moose, I guess. Um, there is there is an important Archon card in the set. There is a mythic, Harmonious Arch Archon, where non-Archon creatures have power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. That actually doesn't doesn't really help this three two. It, it would actually get buffed if it didn't say that. But um, but uh, yeah. So let's see. Archon's effect is a super strong board effect versus cavalcade. But I don't know if four man is low enough to the ground to make a difference there. Yeah, and getting shocked against cavalcade. Uh, you don't want your four man creature to die to shock in that kind of like against red decks. There. Um, protection from white is the least valuable color to have protection from. Uh, not only does that mean that you're you can't use like your own God's willing on your on your Archon of Absolution, which is pretty bad, but White doesn't really have one for one removal for four mana three two flyers too much. Um, so it's a it's that's the worst color to have protection from for uh, for the card. And then yeah, is is this taxing effect really worth it? I could see. Um, I basically if this is gonna like. 
this isn't really going to see play, but maybe if uh, if you can like get a lot of these cards in play and copy it a bunch and basically make it make a pillow fort deck where your opponent can't really attack you because you have a whole bunch of archons. But at that point, you have a whole bunch of three two flyers, and can't you just kill your opponent with three two flyers? Um, so yeah, this is either D minus or L, <laughs> basically. Um, we'll give it a D minus because the the effect on it with um so a couple of things the effect on it you know it has like ghostly prison effect tech like, has been a constructed playable effect and then if for some reason in uh like mono white breaks out and is a really popular deck archon of absolution could be a complete mirror breaker in mono white um if if that turns into a deck um it doesn't look like it with this set, but our next set, Theros, is supposed to be um, a, a set that really focuses on monocolor strategies. So maybe mono white's a deck, and then this is a sideboard card in that. So actually, we'll give it a D because of that potential. We'll do that. It is protection against a fairy. So you know, like how how bad can you be if you're protection against a fairy? That's true. All right, Arden Vale Paladin, three and a white, two five human knight, has adamant. If at least three white mana was spent to cast this spell, Art Arden Vale Paladin enters the battlefield with a one one counter on it. So you can spend four mana to get a uh, three six. That's not very good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give that an L. Sorry, Arden Vale Paladin. All right, next up we got the Arden Vale Tactician, one white white human knight two three flyer but also has adventure so the adventure i guess to kind of explain this for the first time since this is our first adventure creature how this works is you can first when it uh, arden veil tactician is in your hand you can first cast dizzying scoop before you cast the tactician if you would like to uh, you can first cast this half of the card uh, after you cast this half of the card, then you can cast the creature card, or then the card goes to exile, and then you can cast the creature from exile. You may also just choose to, to cast the tactician first, and then you don't get the dizzying swoop. I think I said scoop, but whatever. Um, so dizzy, dizzying swoop is one and white instant, tap two target creatures. I don't see this seeing any play. Um, I don't think this is going to be in Azorius Flyers. Three mana for Azorius Flyers is, is kind of too much. Um, there's a new blue mythic three drop if they really want that. And then there's, um, from the last set, there was the three mana card that gave the two one ones. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not really expecting this to see any play. Um, even with this adventure part tacked on and even with it being a knight card type i just think this is too weak of a card so sorry ardenville tactician going with an l all right bartered cow three and a white when bartered cow dies or when you discard it create a food token and it's a three three so do we want to play a 4-mana 3-3 three, three that we can discard and make a, a food token? Again, this is looking just like limited. Um, yeah, could be pretty good in limited. Yeah, it could just be 3-mana, but who knows? Maybe with limited, they wanted it there. So it has great flavor text. All right, so it says, At the market, no one heeded Hilda's frantic mooing. The Fey curse was turning out even worse than she had feared. Aw, poor Hilda. All right, Barter Cow, going to be a limited card. Yeah, yeah, you do have like uh, Arc Bow where you could discard it to, to Vivian's Arc Bow um, to create the food token. Uh, you know, if you have stuff like Tormenting Voice, if you're playing a Jeskai deck and you play like the Royal Scions, and you want to like draw a card, discard a card, you know, this can be a card that you can discard just to make a food token kind of thing. But still, I mean, we're talking about a four mana three, three, like even with like little synergies with stuff like that. Um, 
you know, even with like, I mean, there are discard theme cards in standard right now, besides, you know, Royal Scions, of course, you have the, the Red Cavalier, you have the Bag of Holding, um, you know, you have stuff like that, uh, that, that do care about discard, but still, I, I don't think we're doing this. Yeah, Tonebound Lich, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Beloved Princess. One mana for a 1-1 one, one lifelink, and it can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. It's a human noble, so it's not a knight. Um, pretty low power level card. But this is the kind of card that could show up in decks because it just costs 1 mana. So, yeah, I think I'm going to yeah, I think this is a, a D card here because this is not a card that like basically on arena when you're playing standard, you're going to see uh somebody play beloved princess. You'll see, you'll see this a couple of times. Um this could be the kind of card that maybe is in like an Ajani's Pride Mate deck. Maybe if there is like a mono white aggro deck with like Venerade Luxodon um and, you know, cards like that that can that can pump up your creature's power uh, it can go there if there turn out if there turns out like in the future sets if there turns out to be a, a good amount of humans and you're playing um something like icon of ancestry for humans you know maybe beloved princess shows up there um so like that that's another thing about doing that yeah there is charming stray that is true that is true um yeah with with mentor I mean, it's this is not a card that's going to see, see very much. It's definitely underpowered. That's for sure. It's definitely an underpowered card. So it's not a card that, that uh, we're going to see too much of. But I'm just going to go. I'm not going to give it just the full L limited rating. We'll go with a D because um, maybe you'll see it somewhere. Um, especially if there's like a human deck or something like that. Who knows? All right. We have Charming Prince. One in a white, two, two. When Charming Prince enters the battlefield, choose one. You either get to scry two, gain three life, or exile another target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end, uh, end step. This is exactly my kind of card. This is the kind of card that I really like to play. Yeah, we have momentary blink with legs. So there's just so many cool things you get to do with this card. Um, the two mana two two scry two. You know, if you're if you're using scry two, it's not spectacular, but we saw that be standard playable with uh, veteran motorist was a big part of standard for Mardu vehicles. There was a two mana three one that scryed two. Uh, that three power was pretty important though for for crewing Heart of Kieran uh, at that time. But still, you know, like if you have nothing better to do, there's there's nothing wrong with having a a two drop that scries two. Uh, gaining three life, you're probably not doing too much either. But, you know, if you're playing against the red deck, it's a really nice tool to have. Um, you know, you block, you know, you trade it, you or you play it, you trade it with uh, one of their small creatures or with a shock or something like that. But then you also get that gain three life to help you stabilize. But, man, that last part, that last part is awesome. And that's really where this card's going to shine. Um, if you're thinking about playing it in Bant with, like, Risen Reef, um, you know, to, to flicker your own creature or um oh gosh so good w with uh, agent of treachery yeah if you if you play an agent of treachery and then a, a charming prince to flicker it there's just so many etb effects i mean that's kind of what standard is like standard creatures are basically all about etb effects right and so flickering your creatures in standard for getting more etb effects is really nice this card also works perfectly with uh uh, Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, and basically just in white black mid range decks in general because of that. You know, you returning Charming Prince to be able to flicker um, other cards, like works really well with like Cavalier of Night. You know, your Cavalier of Night can sacrifice the Charming Prince, and then you use your Soren. The, the, like you had turn four Soren, you have turn five, you have Cavalier of Night, sacrifice it to kill something. Soren can bring it back, which can flicker the Cavalier of Night, which can then sacrifice the Charming Prince again to kill something else. Um, and then, of course, whenever Cavalier of Night dies, it can bring Charming Prince back. Uh, there's a lot of black creatures with ETB effects and everything. Um, so, uh, also get back a creature that's stolen. 
Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, you can. So yeah, it's creatures you own. So yeah, so against... Okay, so yeah, you're saying against Agent of Treachery. They steal your creature, then yeah, yes, you, you can flicker your creature that they they control that you own and put it back um so yeah sideboard potential against yoink effects also um so yeah that's that's pretty sweet um yeah there's just a lot of really good utility the the thing that's going to hold back charming prince honestly is there's not a whole lot of very good white cards from the last few sets like basically um like war, war definitely war the spark and uh core 2020 that were both uh or yeah core 2020 like those two that were both powerful sets white was the worst color by far um so you know this is going to be definitely going to have to be in multicolor decks and so you'll have to see like how the mana works and where where it really goes from there but uh definitely like it in white black decks with soren ventral bloodlord for now and uh you know we'll kind of see where else it goes um in green white you know, resetting like night of, you know, or even like Bantex, like resetting night of autumn, resetting uh, deputy of detention, uh, that kind of stuff. Like, and of course with Bant, you have um, all the risen reef shenanigans as well. So we'll kind of see how that works. Um, Abzan has a lot of good stuff to, to go along with it as well. Uh, yeah. Lots of good stuff there. So, oh yeah. If you have, if you have Vivian in play, three mana Vivian, you can give it flash. And then save your own creatures from removal, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go ahead. I think this is just a nay. I think this is a card that's going to see a lot of play. And uh, it's just going to see a lot of standard play, multiple decks kind of thing. I think this is just a, a good A here. All right, so we're going to A for Charming Prince. All right, we got the Circle of Loyalty. Four white white legendary artifact. This spell costs one less to cast for each knight you control. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance. And it also has pay three and a white and tap it to create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance. Wow, this card has a lot going on. This card has a whole lot going on. Hey, what's up, Telstar? So yeah, so obviously we want to be playing a night deck, right? Because we want um, we want to be able to play this card for cheaper. But it does say that all your creatures you control get plus one plus one, not just knights you control. So if you, if we are playing a night deck where we have, um, let me see if I can find this card that I'm thinking of. There we go. It's at the very bottom, of course. If we have a card like Worthy Knight that you know whenever we cast knights we get extra one one humans, well we're still pumping up the humans as well as night so you know all of our creatures get plus one plus one the thing and so like let's say you have like three knights in play it only costs three mana and you know this card at three mana is pretty awesome you know being an anthem effect and having those other two clauses the one that i'm a little hesitant about is this this legendary spell clause if we're playing like knight aggro what what kind of legendary spells are we really playing? Because remember, that has to be legendary spells. So yeah, even um, history banale won't trigger that part. But like, what what kind of legends are we really playing? Yeah, Oath of Kaya. Seems yeah, that seems like a good one. Ember Cleave. Okay. Yeah, Ember Cleave. Oath of Kaya could also just be other. Wait, no. I guess other Circle of Loyalties won't really work because they are legendary. I was like, oh, it's legendary. You can cast another one. But I was like, wait a minute. No, that's not a good idea. Feather is not really a knight, right? Tajik, Feather. Those aren't... So, like, you'd have to play those in knight decks? Gideon. Yeah, Gideon's pretty good. Yeah, I agree, I agree Zappin. I don't think you need very many legend legendaries for this to be worth it. I don't think you have to build around a whole bunch of legend legendaries, but just how... Like that that is a clause on the card. I was wondering like really how you'd be taking advantage of that. But yeah, that's a good point. Four drop Soren, Gideon, that kind of stuff. Um, of course the more kind of spells you play like that, you know, if you have like a hand that's like four lands, three mana Gideon, four mana Soren, Circle of Loyalty kind of thing, like are you ever actually casting the Circle of Loyalty? You need to play a whole bunch of knights to make this thing cost less. Cause you know, uh, you know, if it starts costing four or five mana, do we really want it? Um are we like are we playing like a night deck that's trying to be like a 
a big mana night deck. They're like a mid range night deck that's that's trying to win in the late game with that four mana tap ability. Probably not, but that that ability is probably just like really helps a night deck beat control. You know, be like a sweeper heavy control deck, where if you if you play like your first three turns putting out like three knights onto the battlefield and you know your opponent's about to play uh, Kaya's Wrath, for example, and so your fourth turn, instead of having to overextend and just put another creature out there or just, you know, pass because you know they're going to Kaya's Wrath, you can play a card like this, like the Circle of Loyalty, uh, that, that gives you another um, avenue of attacking before, like, a Kaya's Wrath. Of course, obviously, you have, uh, t- you have um, three mana Teferi, that if this gets bounced and if your knights die... You know, you're looking at trying to have, like, six mana before you can play this again, and then it not really doing that much. So it's, like, so that's kind of rough. Um, yeah, it's, and uh, and then it's, like, how many do you want to play? So Alder 2 says you think it's a two of in any night deck. I could see that. It's the kind of card that it has potential to be a four of, but it's not likely a four of. Um, you're all, you're welcome, Michigan. So yeah, it's, it has, um, it has some real power, but it also has some real downsides. You know, if you don't have knights in play, it's, you know, six mana and a yeah, six mana anthem. So, you know, it has some real downsides. I could see this not really seeing play. I could also see it being a four of in a popular knight deck really has, um, a wide range of outcomes. This could be, uh, I think, all right, so for Bs, all right, so for, for letter grade, uh, I think it's probably going to be around a B. A B is a, car, is a card that will see a good amount of play in standard in a support role. You know, I think that's kind of where we're looking, but maybe, a, like, so, like, a Voracious Hydra type card, maybe a little bit better. It has a little higher upside than that. It has a, a lot higher upside, I guess I could say, but it also has a lot a lot lower floor as well. I think I'll go with like a B plus. Some people are saying like B plus, B minus. You know, I'm going to go with, maybe we just go with just a B. Um, no, B plus. All right. There's just so much text on this card that it has, it has so much upside. We'll go B plus. All right. Deafening Silence. All right, if you're excited about this card, let me know why, because I am not. <laughs> hey, what's up, Morgan? All right, one white for an enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. So we have... Uh, it just costs one mana, as opposed to the the three mana card that does the same thing, but it's only non-creatures, not just any spells. Um... Yeah, for standard though, yeah, okay, yeah. So y'all like it in modern, but for standard, I'm I'm not quite seeing. Yeah, I think feather feather is like the main thing. Is so like they play one God's willing, and then you can still uh, you can respond after that. Like feather is the thing, but oh yeah, arc light phoenix. But let's let's talk about like how it works in feather. So usually what what you want it for this to kind of how this work is that you use your removal spell on a feather and then they play their God's willing and then they can't use any more spells that turn. So you can still kill it with something else. But that thing is, you know, deafening silence is symmetrical. So that means only you can only cast one non-creature spell. So it's not like you can cast uh, two non-creature spells at that time. So you can't, you know, play a removal spell and then, um, and then uh, wait for their God's willing, and then play another one. You know, because you you can only cast the one also. Because yeah, you've already because so, you've already played your spell. So I I really think this is just going to be, um, I I think I'm just going to go L. Like I don't I don't think that this is a card. I mean, maybe you run into somebody having it in their deck, but I I don't think this is a worthwhile standard card. Um. Shuts down Kethis. Yeah, but yeah, Kethis, I mean, maybe in historic shutting down Kethis, but, you know, Mox Amber is leaving, so Kethis isn't really going to be a deck anymore. Um, 
Uh, I don't, I don't know, Tiki Jiki. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. I don't know. I, I don't even think this is so. Basically, I don't think this is a good sideboard card against anything right now. But it's the kind of card that it's good to have in standard, where you never know what could pop up, what could, what deck kind of could pop up in the future that maybe you want deafening silence. You know, like uh, whenever we talked about Blood Sun, whenever Blood Sun came out, you know, we're like, why would you ever want this Blood Sun? And, you know, then at, right before it rotates, suddenly there's a Field of the Dead, and suddenly Blood Sun's an amazing sideboard card. So maybe that happens for Deafening Silence in the future. Um, so I guess I should give it better than an, an L then, I guess, be, for, because of the future potential. So fine, D minus. All right, Fairy Godmother, white, uh, or let's start out Gift of the Fae first. So you have Gift of the Fae, which is a two-mana sorcery. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. And then attached to that is we have the Fairy Godmother, just a single white uh, pip for a 1-1 one, one flyer. We've seen in standard one-mana 1-1 one, one flyers. That's playable uh, with the Azorius Guys deck, um, you know, like... You really don't, like, you want to have something better than that, but you need to have a whole lot of one-mana 1-1 one, one flyers for that deck. So it is it is playable in that deck. Whether it will make the cut or not, we'll see. There's some other kind of similar type flyers in here, but you also do have the Gift of the Fae attached to your card as well. So maybe this could be like that pump spell that does that extra two damage for lethal, you know, on a critical turn, you know, like whenever uh, you're, you know, about to lose, your opponent's about to stabilize and you need that pump spell, like that, those situations can, um, can happen. But yeah, I mean, two ones, two ones are definitely better than one ones, but there's not a whole, whole lot of one mana, two one flyers kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I think, I think this could be playable in that deck. For sure. So let's see. Um, so I'm thinking like a C is a fringe standard, a fringe standard card that could be used for for filler for certain decks. Ugh. So I feel like that's kind of like what we're talking about here. This could be a fringe standard card that could be used for filler. So I'm, I think this is a C. So Fairy Godmother is a C. All right, Flutter Fox. This is one of my favorite cards in the set. I always like foxes when they have foxes. I wish they have like some good competitive foxes. Yeah, it's 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 not really a combat trick. It's it's like the pump spell for lethal uh, that that you need because yeah, it's it's yeah because it is a sorcery there. All right, anyway, Flutter Fox, two mana, two two. As long as you control an artifact or enchantment, Flutter Fox has flying. Unfortunately, Flutterfox is a lot more fun to say than play it will see in standard. So that is an L. Yep, a good limited fox. <clears throat> no hide. No hide's best fox. Um, fortifying provisions. Two and a white enchantment creatures you control get plus zero plus one whenever fortifying provisions enter the, the battlefield you create a food token uh no i do not want to play this card ever looks like my provision will not be fortified and i'll have to just deal with that given that no <laughs> it's an f not even good and limited <laughs> giant killer all right we have um I guess we go with the adventure part first. So we have first we have the adventure chop down. So chop down is two and a white instant destroy target creature with power four or greater. So if you need to destroy a cavalier of thorns or a questing beast, you get to do that for three mana. It is unfortunate that this dodge that your rock and golos. Uh, two really popular five mana creatures from the previous set they'll probably continue to be popular dodge chop down but there's a lot of big uh, green creatures in the set uh, there's a couple of really good uh, large black creatures as well or at least at least one um, and uh, you know red has a four three 
there's there's a good amount of stuff that that hits in the set. So white having instant speed removal for large creatures. That could be useful. That could be useful. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> no, so provisions won't be legal with, with Arcades. Arcades rotates... Like, uh, the other set rotates immediately whenever these cards come out. Uh, and then uh, we have a one mana, one, two human peasants that we have one in a white tap it and tap target creature so that's basically that card is basically the same as the other tapping creature that's in standard right now right law rune enforcer um isn't law rune the same thing it's just it's like tap target creature with like converted mana cost two or greater right um but it's the same kind of thing one mana one two with that so like the giant killer is just is just better there. Law, yeah, Law Rune costs one. This costs one. This also costs... Oh, like the tapping part costs one. Oh, okay. So the tapping part costs one. Um, yeah, Kendis, I can definitely do that. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, so the tapping part costs one with Law Rune. This one, it costs two. But you can... Yeah, you can tap Knight of the Ebon Legion... Um, you can tap anything that you want. You can tap like gilded, you know, like mana creatures and stuff on upkeep. But then you also have that chop down instant. I I think this is about the same kind of play playability as Law Rune Enforcer. Is it a lot better? No, not necessarily. I could also just see control decks like maybe like blue white control that's looking for some removal. Like depending on how the metagame goes, like Questing Beast is a heck of a card, and so I could see Questing Beast warping the metagame to being uh in in such a fashion where you want to play a card like chop down to help be able to deal with questing beast um you know i, I could see that happening so like i could see that just being being a thing like where even like blue eye control decks would just like play this and then just you know have a giant killer later on uh, where they can, you know, like th they're playing a really late game where they don't mind setting, kind of setting two mana aside to take out your, to kind of take down your your best creature there. Um, so yeah, I, I like I like Giant Killer, definitely playable card. Um, I think I'm kind of thinking like maybe a B minus here. It's either B minus or C plus. It's kind of in that range. It's kind of between a B and a C. Um, so it's kind of, if it's closer to, you know, like which one it's closer to, I'm going to go with B minus here. Cause I, I could see a good, like, you know, different decks playing it for the top down. Cause there's not really good instant speed removal for white at all. So I could see that happening. Okay. Next up, we got glass casket, one in a white artifact. When glass casket enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with CMC three or less until glass casket leaves the battlefield. So this is basically ba uh, baffling end, right? Like baffling end, whenever it left the battlefield, um, your opponent got a three, three dinosaur. This, they just get their creature back. So I think that, um, the baffling end is better. I think I'd rather give my opponent the 3-3 dinosaur than their creature back most of the time. However, Glass Casket has a really big uh, important upside in the fact that it's an artifact. And there's different cards in the set that have artifact matters. There's cards where artifact matters that are in the standard right now, like Car like the 4-mana Karn, where 4-mana Karn uh, can now go to your sideboard and grab a useful removal spell, which that like just has not been um it has not been the case um no baffling end was just creature so so like so that's that's a really big upside here with glass casket now you do have to play four mana karn and you have to play white the problem is white isn't really that you know it's it's the weakest color in standard so you know like that's that's part of the thing but you know if you're playing like an esper artifact deck um you can have it there or uh you know anything like that but you know this is still just like a baffling end type removal spell baffling end was uh really good um yeah then there's yeah dance of the manse there's that card and then yeah there's there's other cards in the set that that uh care about artifacts so yeah i like glass casket quite a bit 
Um, it's not like an A, I don't think, but I think this is like a, a solid B to B plus. I think this is the kind of card that um yeah it's silk wrap on an artifact yep yep i mean yeah it's just, just like baffling end on an artifact basically this is the kind of card that again it will see more play if white improves as a color you know whenever mono white aggro was a good deck and a lot of people played it baffling end was like a four of in the sideboard or you know at least a three of you know and so i could see that same kind of thing if uh maybe maybe uh knight aggro decks want to play some glass casket in the sideboard that could be a thing but yeah we'll go with a b plus it's a, it's a good card but white needs to improve as a color to see more okay happily ever after all right y'all are gonna have to help me with this one this one is all over the place hey what's up matthew so we got three and a white for an enchantment. And it says, when happily ever after enters the battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. Okay, so we got our three-man enchantment where we both gain five life and draw a card. So if we're not trying to really um, pressure our opponent's life total at all, that's just a you know pretty good of like the whole gaining five life for us. Our, our opponent gets to draw a card as well, so it's never really that good if, you're, if you have your opponent draw cards. At the beginning of your upkeep, so you have to have Happily Ever After in play on your upkeep for this to trigger. If there are five colors among permanents you control, all right, so you have a permanent of every single color, that's probably not going to happen. I guess if you just have a Niv-Mizzet in play, that would trigger. Or that, would, that would work, because that's five colors among permanents you control. You just have to have one Niv-Mizzet in play. Um, there are six or more card types among permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard. Hey, okay. Um, so card, so that means that you could have uh, land enchantment, artifact, planeswalker, instant sorcery. You have like those seven, um, between your, between the battlefield and in your graveyard. And then also your life total has to be greater than or equal to your starting total, starting life total. You just win the game. So you have to have all that stuff happen. And it has to be your upkeep with after, happily ever after in play to win the game. Um, I don't think Golos counts. I think Golos is just colorless. So no, Golos doesn't count. It's a combo with plain white celebration. How does this, how does this work with plain white celebration? Our plain white celebration... Oh the the oh the the tokens are creatures of every color. Right? That's what y'all are saying. Okay, so the tokens are all colors. So you can have that plain white celebration can return happily ever after from your graveyard back to your hand. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, this card is pretty ridiculous. Um I think this is this is just going to be I think this is like a, a classic case of a D, a card that you'll rarely see in standard. Um, but also just like a really, really janky build around card. I think this, this is just a D. Like this is one that's like a an F and M hero deck. They try to try to get that win con. Yeah, if you win the game with this, yeah, you should just get. What if it just said you win the match? Instead of you win the game. What if it's just like the match is over? Never seen anything like that. <laughs> D for dang fun to play. There you go. Yeah, I, I can I don't I guess I didn't really write that the jank cards like this are a D. I can update the the grade there, but yeah, that's that's what we're gonna call this. Jankily ever after. Alright, let's move on. We have the Harmonious Archon four white white for a four five flying creature. Um, non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness, 3 and 3. And whenever Harmonious Archon enters the battlefield, create 2, 1, 1, white human creature tokens. Um, all right, so I really like Harmonious Archon. I think this card is really strong. So it, it basically, you know, like, 
basically all the other creatures aren't going to be uh, Archons. So while it's in play, it's the biggest thing on the battlefield, and everything else is just evened out, 3-3. Three, three. So that means that, um, you know, Questing Beast trades for your, your two 1-1s, one you know, their, uh, your Rock or Cavalier Thorns, like those things are just 3-3s. Three um, your Archon can fly over and not, you know, only get chump blocked by a Cavalier Thorns. All that kind of stuff. So if you can go, um, yeah, so it makes two three threes. Yep. If you can go, uh, if you can go real wide and then just play, you know, like get a whole bunch of one ones in play and then for six mana slam harmonious Archon, you can turn them all into three threes and attack for a bunch. Um, I guess... I guess it kind of works with Field of the Dead. If you're if you're going with Field of the Dead, get a bunch of two twos. You can turn your Field of the Deads into three threes, and and have your other opponent's creatures just be three threes. Also, if you want like a a top end card on your Field of the Dead deck, um, but yeah, an Arc Bow deck could look good there. Uh, yes, I guess it would turn Nissa lands into six six because they'd be three threes that have three one one counters on them so yeah it would turn nissa lands into being six sixes because they have the counters on there so yeah yeah it does work with all those plus one plus one counter stuff that's a good call there uh like hydrocrasis and all that kind of stuff that's a good call um so yeah like this is a really powerful card and it can fit kind of anywhere you know like we've been talking about how it can fit in aggro it can fit in in mid-range um it's just a really powerful card, basically. I, I got you, Candice. I got you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it works on the opponent's creatures also. All the creatures on the battlefield are now just 3-3s. Three it uh, works really well with Oko. Uh, if you're playing Oko and you and Oko has, like, the steal effect where or, like, the trade effect where you can trade, like, your food token for any one of your opponent's creatures because um, Oko lets you lets you trade for creatures with power or like with power three or less. So, um, so, you know, like it works pretty well with Oko there. And then of course, if you're, you're playing green, you can kind of help ramp into it as well. Um, but yeah, so this, this is just a good card. It should see a good amount of play. Again, we kind of have to dock it because again, white is still the worst color in standard. Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely going to see less play because it is white. I think if it was a different color, it could see a lot more play. Um, so I think this is probably going to be, I mean, this is somewhere in the A range, a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. I think that's kind of what this card is. Not going to, like, it is still a six mana card and everything. I think I'm going to go A minus. But, but Harmonious Archon is quite good uh crisis would stay on the battlefield as a three three if this is in play and yeah if you play a zero zero crisis it would be a th yeah if there, it would be a three three because crisis would then have base power and toughness of three three okay so how it works on the lands the six six part is is the lands would be three threes instead of zero zeros but the lands would still have the three plus one plus one counters on them that Nissa gives them. So they would be three threes now with three plus one plus one counters. So they would be so that's how they'd be six six. Because the counters are still there. So yeah, Bant Elementals could be a finisher there for sure. Um works really well in like a, a I don't know if anybody really uh yeah, so yeah, I think somebody else okay, somebody just said that, yeah. If we were playing like a Boros deck where you have make maybe like a, a bigger Boros mid-range deck, if you have like three mana Chandra, you know, three mana Chandra makes two three threes instead of one ones. Um, Legion War Boss makes a three three instead of a one one. And and all your opponent's creatures are also three three, so it's not like they get to just, you know, eat your token. They have to trade with those. If they want to block them, they have to trade. So yeah, that could be a red white tokens card. Maybe this should just be an A. It kind of fits it fits with so many different things. Yeah, you don't need you don't need mentor though. 
Ooh, Swift Blade Vindicator. Oh yeah, 10 Street Hooligans making a bunch of 3-3s. Three yeah, and then yeah, Selesnia tokens, all the all the token stuff, you know, raise the alarm making two three threes at end step. The the thing is is it's it's super, super powerful, but it is six mana. So like can you play all those other cards and stuff and still play a six mana creature? Oh yeah, fantastic with Venerate Luxodon. All right, up next we got Hushbringer. One in a white, one two, flying lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So as y'all know, this is Takatli Honor Guard, but better. We have, it's a 1-2 instead of a 1-3, so it dies to shock. That's the only downside that this has is that it dies to shock now, where Honor Guard didn't die to shock. However, now dying doesn't cause abilities to trigger, so no more, um, no more Cavalier Thorns dying and, and getting like the Exile stuff or any of the Cavaliers. Uh, now, no none of that stuff anymore um and uh dread horde butcher that's a good call no more dread horde butcher um yeah i would definitely would rather have it as a one three but i but the the reason why this is uh, a lot stronger really is this first keyword flying so this is a card that that fits perfectly in the azorius uh flyers deck the azorius flyers deck really kind of had a hole at the two mana card uh, they have like some, some good one drops and everything after rotation here, but they, they didn't really have a good two drop. And this is a perfect two drop for that deck that allows them just to play four Hushbringers main deck and just um, have a, a really good hate card, main deck hate card. And it also has lifelink. So if you're pumping the power or if you're pumping this up with, um, you know, like the, the Lord effects or anything or rally of wings or anything like that, you got the lifelink also to help win races. Um, this uh yeah so this is just a really great main deck card for for azorius flyers and i think this this can really uh you know fill a big hole for that deck um yeah it's great against judith yeah it's great against all the rakdos um yeah great against elementals um and of course remember you are playing white and so you could have god's willing in your deck if you want to try to protect hushbringer if it's like a really important card, I'm just saying like, I'm not, you know, not saying that you will, but I'm just saying you can, uh, besides that we we're talking about like Mardu Knights, maybe having this as a sideboard card against elementals and like Rakdos and stuff. Um, you know, mayhem devil isn't getting those triggers, you know, like mayhem devil has seen a good amount of play in like the standard 2020, you know, to go along with three mana Chandra and stuff. You get to stop that down. Um, uh, yeah, it does hurt the God. E yeah, the the yeah, like God Eternal Kefnet. Yeah, the gods if they if they die, they get talked, but no more. Um, yep, just stops kind of everything. Yeah, so the format does have tons of removal for it, and again, there's there's not tons of white decks, but I think Azorius Flyers and Cyborg from Mardu Knights are good good spots for it immediately. And then we'll kind of see if there's any kind of like token kind of deck where maybe we can play these and, you know, any kind of like Boros deck or something. You know, this could be like a Boros card for sure. So Hushbringer should see lots of play. This is going to be an A. Um, yeah. So we're giving an A to Hushbringer. Yeah, the format has tons of removal for everything. Yep, every creatures die to removal. That's how magic goes. Risen Risen Reef's a three drop that dies to every single removal spell ever. That doesn't mean you don't play it, kind of thing. All right, Knight of the Keep. Two and a white, human knight, three two. Um, that's all. This, this is while this does have the knight creature type. This card is really just made for limited. This isn't going to see any standard play. We don't play three mana. Three twos in standard. So that gives an L. Linden, the Steadfast Queen. White, white, white for a 3-3 three, three Vigilance. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain a life. I feel like this is... I feel like this is a card that could maybe see play in a future set. Like after a future set, like maybe like with Theros... We get more, like, we have, like, a few really good humans, as we've seen. 
but not enough really for a human's deck. Especially not a mono white human's deck. Um Yeah, Knight of, yeah, Knight of the Keep can play, be limited played for sure. Three mana, three twos. You can play those unlimited for sure. Yeah, it's got the triple white. Like, whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain a life. Like, that's not that valuable of a trigger. You know, we've had that with uh, Vampires. There's like Sanctum Seeker that's you gain a life, but then also your opponent loses a life. That's a whole lot more valuable. Um, you know, a 3-3. Three, three, isn't great stats. There's there's new red burn spells that do three damage. You know you're looking at like Oath of Kaya killing your three drop. Um, this is just not. I don't know. That's not great. Um, but there, there could be, like I was saying, like there could be a, a mono white deck after like Theros or maybe after some other sets. But for now, I don't think we're playing Linden too much. Um, maybe eventually, like with a Johnny's Pride Mate and uh, a, a Johnny's Strength of the Pride, you know, maybe there's something there. Um, but I'm not, I don't think right now. As far as rating goes, um, I think this is just kind of a C, like a, a Corpse Knight uh, level. You know, like it. You know, it's good enough for stand. It's good enough for standard play, but it just doesn't really have all the tools right now. Okay, we got lo uh, our next card. We'll start with the source. We'll start with the adventure parts. So we have Rider in Need, which is two and a white sorcery. Create a two-two white knight creature token with vigilance. And then we have Lonesome Unicorn, four and a white for a three-three vigilant unicorn. Good card in limited. Where you can spend three mana and get a two two that trades with the the knight of the keep, and then later on spend a five mana for a three three, but not a card for standard. So that's an L. Yeah, future card. Mysterious Pathfinder, two and a white for a two two, flying fairy. Each creature you control that has adventure enters the battlefield with an additional one one counter. Um, I mean, obviously, if you just have a ton of adventure creatures, no, no. All right, limited. There's just not enough good adventure creatures with one set. We're not going to get any more adventure creatures. Um, yeah, it it could be playable for this green. I mean, could it have? So, if, do we want like a green white adventure deck? But then we, we're playing a three mana two two flyer, and that's just to get some extra one one counters on creatures. I don't think that that's really strong enough for standard. You know, like we're talking about standard here. We can do better, even in those colors. All right, outflank a uh, white for an instant. Outflank deals damage to target attacking or blocking creature equal to the number of creatures you control. So you have to be playing a whole lot of creatures. Like if you have like three creatures in play, then they attack you. Then you can have one white do three damage to that attacking creature. Um, it is just a single white mana. So yeah, I think this is sideboard usable for I could see that sideboard usable for blue white flyers or for Selesnia flyers, something like that against other aggro decks because it is just a single white mana. Is this <clears throat> like would you rather have that in your sideboard over like glass casket that that costs two but is not, um, it's it's not uh, it doesn't have like the stipulations that this has. Um, it's just reliable to get rid of the other creature. It doesn't even, you know, you don't even have to wait for them to attack with it. If it's a, if it's a creature that, um, can just sit out on the battlefield, like Risen Reef, for example, and doesn't need to attack and gets a lot of value. What's up, Fat Butters? <laughs> Thanks very much for the sub there. I appreciate that. That's our fourth sub of the day. 
So yeah, this is this is not very reliable, but at one mana, that's that's the cost that you you want to have for a lot of decks. But I still don't want to give it too high of a rating. I'm gonna go with like a, a D here. But yeah, other people say it's less reliable than Gideon's Reproach for an extra mana and stuff like that. So I'm not expecting very much out of this card, but maybe it's kind of playable for the um, for the sideboard there. All right, we got Prized Griffin, five mana, three, four, Flying Griffin. That is not a card that we want to see ever. So that's a limited card. Rally for the Throne. Three mana, create two, one, one, white human creature tokens. That's not very good. That's just a lot worse than... Um, uh, gosh, now I, I can't think of it. Raise the Alarm. It's a lot, lot worse than Raise the Alarm. Like The difference between two and three mana is huge. You know, Give me Raise the Alarm where we make our, our two creatures for two mana for sure. So what is this adamant? So if we spend... If all three mana or white mana... Then we gain one life for each creature you control. That is still not that valuable. Um, yeah, that is that is not that valuable. So I don't like not liking this card. Um, three mana for two one ones is just much below the curve for standard, even in token decks. Um, there's there's got to be like this is I'm just gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the D minus rating here uh, instead of just limited, but. If there's a future human deck that having two humans is really important, because I think Raise the Alarm makes soldiers, I guess maybe. But I think this is a very low chance for really wanting to play this card. And then, yeah, it could be a timely reinforcements almost, I guess. Yeah, like that one life could be... That's the other thing you do... If you are able to have a lot of creatures out, and you're if you're just in a in a uh, strict racing scenario where your opponent's not playing removal and they're just trying to attack you, like against blue white flyers, for example, and you want two one ones that don't block flyers, and you'd rather have that and gain some life. I, I don't know. Okay, realm of cloaked giants. I'll, I'm going to go with the D minus. I don't like the card but it's not completely unplayable. Realm Cloak Giant. Uh, seven man... Or let's see. We got Cast Off. We're doing the adventure part first. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. So if we want to go on the adventure to Cast Off, three white white, destroy all non-giant creatures. And then we can play the Realm Cloaked Giant, seven mana, get a seven seven Vigilant Giant. This is a mythic. It kind of feels like a rare, but this is a mythic. So it's it's basically destroy all creatures for five mana. It's worse than time wipe. You know, time wipe destroys all creatures and then puts one of your but puts one of your creatures back into your hand for you to replay. And so we've seen how good time wipe's been. Like time wipe has been really, really nice. Um and then of course it is non-giant creatures. We know that there is a a red uh giant, bone crusher giant that will probably be popular. So you know, the first time you try to play a cast off and your opponent has like a bone crusher giant that just survives and then hits you for four and then and then you're like dead, you're probably gonna be pretty upset and just cast this card off and never play it again. Um so that's that's something that that uh could happen. Um however, yeah, I know yeah, yeah, looks like y'all are Y'all are kind of high on it. However, so I kind of talked about the downside of it. Talking about the upside now, it is a five mana sweeper that gives you the win condition, right? So like if you could play, you know, like blue white control with all like instants and sorceries, you can be playing like your magic mirror, a blue card that we'll be talking about later, or just, you know, other cards like that, where you just can, you can play a, just a real defensive deck where you can just have this as a win condition. We've seen that in control decks before be really popular or powerful where like remember after uh, Dominaria came out and we had five mana Teferi being played as like the only win condition in blue white control uh, where basically you just don't have to use a slot for a win condition. You know, you can just have uh, your sweeper 
be able to kill your opponent. That's that's really valuable where you, all your cards are defensive and all your cards uh, can do something to help keep you alive and help you stabilize and help you take control of the late game. And so then you don't have to spend any card, uh, you know, any card slot in your deck for a card that doesn't do that. <clears throat> so that's that's where Rogue Cloak Giant could really shine a deck that you want to play super, super late. Is that kind of deck going to be very good in this metagame? We'll see. Uh, there's a lot of card advantage everywhere. And with the, there being like elementals and uh, Field of the Dead and stuff like that, are we really getting there with Realm Cloak Giant? Um, you know, like whenever, you know, like like how, how does this ever get through Field of the Dead, you know, for example, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, this is... Um, this is definitely a playable card. You know, I'm not I'm not saying this is not playable, but it's not perfect. So, <clears throat> you know, a B is a card that we'll see a good amount of play, standard play in a support role. I think that's kind of like where we're looking at here for Realm Cloak Giant, honestly. Uh, maybe it's a little better, you know, but this kind of feels like Voracious Hydra type level to me, you know, Voracious Hydra, Scampering Scorger, just, you know, it'll probably see about the same amount of play as those things. So I'm kind of thinking like a B. There. The art is really cool. Yeah, that art is really cool. All right, Righteous, one white instant target blocking creature gets plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. Un playable like what does that number even have to be to be playable if it said one white instant target blocking creature gets plus 12 plus 12 until end of turn plus 15 plus 15 until end of turn it's just what's what's the point yeah i think the only the only thing would be like with fling yeah, I guess it could combo with fling. So you have to you have to have your creature out. You have to block another creature, and then you play your righteous, then fling. And you have to hope you have to hope that after you play your righteous on your your blocking creature, therefore basically making sure that whatever whatever you're blocking is gonna die. So you have to hope that at that point your opponent doesn't want to use an instant speed removal in response to your righteous on your card no fling is a two mana instant that says you, you sacrifice a creature and you deal damage to any target equal to the creature's power so you know you can pump up your power here and then throw your creature at your opponent's face um yes yeah, so then you could fling it in response to the removal but then you'd only get like the small creature that you'd have then but yeah, I mean, if it's yeah, fling is in the set. Yeah, fling fling was reprinted in the set. Yeah, dreadhorde butcher, righteousness and fling. Never gonna happen. But uh, yeah, I mean that that could work, I guess. So all right, we'll go. I guess I won't go with an L. Fine, we'll go D minus fine i guess it i guess that's super janky and you, you can do that those are those are cards you can play together and win a game of magic um <laughs> so there you go made it to d minus but really for this to be a, a card that you'd actually want to play i wonder i wonder how like i wonder if there is a number you know, like let's say there's no fling in the format but if it just said tar target blocking creature gets plus 30, plus 30 for one mana, it's just like, we're not playing it. I, mean, I guess with fling, you could play the plus 30, plus 30. Like, well, where, where is that number? Is, yeah, if it costs zero, but like, let's say if it, if it cost one, like how high would that number actually have to get where you're like, I'm going to put righteousness in my deck. It's it's a good card though. It's a it's a well-designed card. 
the reason why I like this card though, because like this is a card that it looks flashy, you know, like big numbers, you know, like that's a big crooked number there, plus seven, plus seven. So that that's like, you know, eye popping number there. But it's also a card that uh you can see it and even in limited, you know you don't really you probably don't want to play this. So it's it's a card that you're confident to cut, like whenever you're making like a sealed deck. I think there's a lot of value to having uh cards in like see like for like sealed that are cards that you know okay i I probably shouldn't be playing this card like this is a card that i don't want to be playing so like whenever you have like pre-releases and stuff with newer players it's something they can they can kind of see and be like all right well i know like this is a card i don't really want and and instead of just having all cards that are pretty playable and just being overwhelming trying to make like a a sealed pool deck i think there is some some good value with cards like that Okay, let's go with our next card, Shepherd of the Flock. Um, one in a white, or sorry, Usher to Safety. Let's start with the, I always keep on forgetting, start with the adventure part, because you cast that first. So Usher to Safety, single white instant return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. And then you can also have Shepherd of the Flock, one in a white for a 3-1 human peasant. So the, the second part, one in a white for a 3-1 is not playable whatsoever. There's plenty of like, one in a white three ones that you're not putting in a deck at all so uh, you know it is a human you know maybe later on that really matters but so that's that's not a good card so it's like do you really really need usher to safety single white yes you can save any permanent you control um you know they try to starve extinction your land you can bounce your land to counter starve extinction uh i guess you could do that in historic um yeah you could you could play that with other adventure cards to bounce their adventure cards back to your hand so you could adventure again like murderous rider um you could bounce your own three mana to fairy yeah i mean so like for three mana you play to fairy you bounce their creature then they replay their creature then for four mana you bounce your to fairy again and then replay your to fairy to bounce something again it's just not worth a card to do that. It's just not worth a you know, like you have sixty card slots in your deck. This is not worth it. As a card. There there are things you can do with it, as we were talking about there. But we're we're not doing it. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a blink, but not very good. Yeah, I know the adventure part isn't like a, a real card, but do we want to do that and then have just a two mana three one? Like a two mana three one is not valuable. That's not that's not very good in standard. This is two just really bad cards put together, and I don't think just because you get both of them that we should be playing this. I'm gonna go with an L for limited. Um, yeah. All right, we have Shining Armor, one in a white, artifact equipment. You can see, so yeah, other people in chat liked the card more than I did, but we'll see. So Shining Armor, one in a white equipment, flash, when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target knight you control. Equipped creature gets plus zero, plus two, and has vigilance, and also has equip three. I don't think we're really playing this in any night deck. Give our creature plus zero, plus two, and vigilance. Um, no. Seven says this is a D. Sometimes playable. Does adventure, incident, or sorcery go back to your hand with feather? I'm not exactly sure there, honestly. I don't... I don't think so or i don't know i i i didn't mean to say i don't think so i meant to say i don't know um that's what i meant to say all right so shining armor i'm gonna go with the l for limited rating silver flame ritual three and a white sorcery put a one one counter on each creature you control uh, adamant if at least three white mana was spent to, to cast the spell creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn this is another 
L for limited. Um, there's a card in standard that is miles better than this um, for every reason. Um, Unbreakable Formation is just much better than this in every way, and you don't need more than four Unbreakable Formations. So, nope. Silver Flame Squire. <sighs> Did again. Oh, well, maybe I'll just go with the creature. Silver Flame Squire is a one and a white, two one, and it has Adventure on alert, two and a white, uh, instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Untap it. This is also just not very playable. Let's go with an L for limited here. We'll kind of keep moving on because we're only on card number 32 now. Sir Allen, the Lion's Claw, three white, white, four, four, first strike. Whenever Sir Allen, the Lion's Claw attacks, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. The best thing this card has going for it is that it's a legendary knight, and a legendary knight would be really valuable with Circle of Loyalty. That would be that's a very valuable card. Uh, card type, legendary knight. However, everything else about it, not so great. Five mana, four four. We are not playing. <laughs> Sir, all in. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, we're we're not doing that. That's that's a pretty good A plus nickname, sir. All in. That's pretty good. All right, uh, we got trapped in a tower. Uh, I'm giving it the limited rating. Trapped in a tower, one in a white enchantment aura. Enchant creature without flying. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Uh, nope. So we'll go limited. Good card and limited. You know, it's just pacifism. But also can't activate abilities and stuff. But we don't need to play that in constructed. <laughs> True Love's Kiss. Two white, white, instant. Exile, target, artifact, or enchantment. Draw a card. So it's it's a little over-costed. Uh, but, you know, it does have the draw card part, um, but this could be a, uh, yeah, it's better than pacifism, as, except for, you know, it doesn't get a, a flyer. So, you know, if you're dying to flyers, it doesn't help you out. But, yeah, it's still still not a card we want for Constructed. So this this could be a sideboard card. Uh, the thing is about artifacts and enchantments, we do have the legendary artifact mythic cycle. So, you know, it gives you an answer there. You have You have cards like Disenchant you could play, though. Uh, that I think you'd probably rather just play Disenchant at 2 mana to be more mana efficient than 4 mana, play this and draw a card. This does Exile, though, instead of Destroy. So if if the Exile is, is really important, if that if Exile turns out to be really important, then uh, you, know, you, you can go this way. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go like D- is like a, a really narrow sideboard card. Um, if for some reason you just, you know, we get to the point where we need to Exile... Uh, like those legendary artifacts like the Great Henge or something, then I guess this could be in the sideboard, but probably not. All right, Venerable Knight. Y'all think you'll think I should just give this True Love's Kiss just an L? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm never going to play that card. All right, fine. We'll just go L. Venerable Knight. Uh... Just a one mana two one human knight. That's perfect. That's that's just fine. And then whenever it dies, you can put a one one counter on target knight you control. Good card. You know this is just a, a one mana two one that that goes to the knight decks. Like we've seen that with like the vampires, how one mana two ones are playable. It has a little bit of upside. Whenever it dies, you you know you're putting a counter on another knight you control. So a good role player here for a knight deck. It's not really much more than that. Um, it's basically like. I mean, I guess it could see some play if there's like a mono white aggro, uh, also just being a one mana two one that has a little bit of upside. So, you know, good. Um, you know, so uh, a B is a card that will see a good amount of play in standard in a support role. That's kind of what Venerable Knight is. It's a good support card. Um, yeah. So just just a B here. Um, I think B plus. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, like, if this will, like, there are some other good one-drop knights, 
you know, between there's the fervent champion in red and there's Knight of the Ebon Legion in black. So, you know, we'll see if this makes the cut as well. Uh, but it probably will. And so, oh, do you know what? This whole time, I thought that was just like a, a pretty short night. This whole time, I just realized that knight is as is uh is on a knee. I just realized that knight's on a knee. This whole time, I just thought that was like a like a, a short night. Did y'all think that? Yeah, it was like a it was like a dwarf knight. That's what I I really thought this was like a dwarf knight. Yeah, other people did too. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I thought. But no, it's 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 a knight on a knee. Oh well. All right, uh, worthy knight. I just realized that. Um, uh, you can see up here at the top. This is the order that we're going in. We are currently in white. We're going by the the card numbers. So you know that was card number thirty-five. All right, we're on thirty-six. Worthy Knight, one in a white, two, two. Whenever you cast a knight spell, you create a one, one white human creature token. This does certainly incentivize you to have cheap knights like Venerable Knight because, you know, Venerable Knight is one mana and it's a two, one that also brings a one, one along with it. Um, you know, that is, that's really nice. So yeah, Worthy Knight, um, very good. Uh, you know, definitely like a, a four of in a knight deck. Certainly seems like it. Um, you know, we've seen here, like, it's not as good as Hero of Precinct 1, because Hero triggers off all the multicolor spells, and, I don't know, it's easier to cast a whole lot of spells than just play a whole lot of knights, I think. I think. Um, but yeah, it could be a defining card, popular deck. Yeah, I think, I think this is a, a good solid A. Um, maybe an A-, minus, because it is just a knight deck. Um, but it, it does seem like it'd be a defining card for the night deck. Um, yeah. Yeah, this does trigger off the second copy. That's true. So, like, if you play turn two Worthy Knight and then turn three you play another Worthy Knight, you get that extra 1-1, one, one, where, like, you know, if you go hero into hero, you don't get that extra 1-1. One, one. So that's pretty nice. Um, do you get the token off the Adventure half or the Murderous Rider? It'd be the Murderous Rider, because the Adventure... Adventure is not a knight spell. The rider would be, is a knight spell. Yeah, it doesn't make knights, but it makes humans. As we talked about, though, um, Circle of Loyalty only costs less for every knight, so it doesn't cost less for your humans, but it does pump your humans as well. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's just go with an A here for Worthy Knight. That's a good solid A. And then we have Youthful Knight. So one in a white for a two one first strike. Um, I think this is just L. I think this is just a limited card. Uh, we can be doing better even for our night decks in standard than just playing a two one first strike. All right, so there we go. That's that's our white set review. Let's let's kind of go back and take a look at our top five cards here. Um, so cards that we gave the best ratings. We gave uh, Worthy Knight. An A. I'm gonna kind of write these down, and I'll I'll write this down on on the YouTube channel down below. Also, Venerable was a B. And we'll kind of see what our our top five cards were here from the color Realm Cloaked Giant. We gave a B. Um, Hushbringer. We said A. Harmonious Archon was an A. Glass Casket was a B plus. Giant Killer B minus. Circle of Loyalty was a B plus. And Charming Prince was an A. So it looks like we had four A's, two B pluses. Oh, three B pluses. Acclaimed contender was a B plus also. So I guess our our top four cards we got to have the four A's, and then either um, 
either glass casket, glass casket, circle of loyalty, or acclaimed contender, one of those for the fifth card. And I think, I think I'm going to go acclaimed contender. Yeah, white is not one of the best colors here. Yeah, I think contender is the best of those. So we'll go with acclaimed contender for our for our, our number five card. Um, I think number four card, I'm kind of thinking. So our, our, our uh, other, uh, our A's were Charming Prince, Harmonious Archon, Hushbringer, and The Worthy Knight. Those were our four A's. So let's go. Um, I don't. No, not not really. Up. You can you can check that out later. Um, so you had Prince Hushbringer, Worthy Knight. I like Prince a lot. I like Hushbringer a lot. That's that's tough. You know, like these are just so close here. Um, Archon or Worthy Knight. I think let's go let's go Archon fourth. You know Archon has such high such high upside. Archon four, Worthy Knight three, Hushbringer two, Charming Prince one. Yeah, I'm gonna well I'll have this on on the the YouTube part. I'll put uh, I'll put those top five there. But anyway, there we go. I think I think that's what we'll do for those top five. Um, all right. If you so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the format and everything like that. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. Feel free to let me know your top five if you'd have a different top five than I do there. What cards am I higher or lower on? Of course. Um, but there we go. Make sure you click on over to blue, which is what we're going to have up next. So thank you so much for watching uh, part one here for our Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. And I'll see you for the next color.